Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome back to Azel's TV and part 15 of a wooden clock build. It's going to be all kinds of fun today. Let's have some fun. Let's just have some fun. Let's go. Okay, here we are back at it. I've got a plan for getting this servo to move in the sine wave that we wanted to, I mentioned in the previous video. So let's show you what I've been, what I've been finding and researching and everything else. So as luck would have it, I came across this website a number of weeks ago when I was trying to work out how to make my servos move smoothly. I thought I'll bookmark this for later on. And here we are. Basically you type in variables here and it allows you to generate a sine wave or rather data points to make a sine wave. And that's exactly what we want for the lookup table. Now I can type in a number of points being 360. I can set the maximum amplitude but I can't set the minimum. But that's not a problem, that's an easy workaround and I'll show you what I mean. So this is the range of angles we want, 31 degrees to 142. Now this is the raw value going to the server object to move the servo. There's no offset or anything else, there's no scaling done, it's just that number. We're going to ignore the lookup table, because we're not using that anymore. And we're going to ignore this down here, because this is for the two servos, but first of all they're pretty close. And secondly we're only concentrating first of all on this one. Now as you can see the minimum number is 31 maximum is 142 but we can't set a minimum number on the website so what we do we'll set a or well, minimum is going to be zero anyway we'll set the maximum as 111 put those in and generate a sine wave and then we'll add 31 back to these numbers so the whole sine wave shifts over to give this and that as a minimum and a maximum so we set the maximum amplitude to 111 number of rows which is really number of columns I don't want to put rows that's one and we'll set the number to be decimal now I click submit and I get this beautiful string of numbers now we need to add the 31 to this to get the offset which we can then put into the lookup table so I'll select all of those and copy those so that's now on a clipboard now we need to paste these values into this column here but without the commas, so if you use edit then paste special, select unformatted text, click OK, we can then make it comma delimited, like that. If you look down here it's gotten rid of the commas, click OK and here we are. Now we can add the 31 by doing this and then, ooh, oh there we go, this equals that plus 31 that gives us our first value then we just select this and drag it all the way down here there we go so that is the values we need for our lookup table and we can see that this works if we click on the graph icon click on the line type and then from Clarity, get rid of the points and get a nice sine wave. Beautiful. So let's select these and then copy those to the clipboard. Now we're back on the interwebs and we've got another website which is going to really, really help us. It will take any string of numbers and basically put it in a single line, which we need, and put commas between the numbers, which we really, really need. So I'll just paste my numbers into here and I get this and this is our lookup table this is it we can now copy this and paste it into the IDE for Arduino upload the sketch so let's give that a whirl here's the lookup table pasted into our code we've increased the data point size to 360 and we put the delay right down to 10 milliseconds I can't remember what it was before I think it's like 100 or something because there's a lot fewer data points so we'll upload that and see how that looks. Now the moment of truth. Okay. That's a lot smoother and I can run it slower. I'll probably speed up a bit. But we'll see when I do the final loop around. Wait, 
will it do a full 360? Yeah, look at that. Okay. So next job is going to be changing the code so that I can press these two buttons and step this through each of the 360 positions of the lookup table and use this potentiometer to manually move this so for each button press and it goes around I'll move this around until this lines up and when it lines up and it drops in place like that I'll read off both these numbers and put them in the lookup table for that angle it shouldn't take too long there's 360 entries but I can just press a button move it record it press a button move it record it and so on so next up will be coding this here we go right now we're having fun these buttons I've coded to increment and decrement the index number so pressing these will go through the lookup table and generate the servo angles for the first servo and then displayed here on this table so pressing this one makes them go up pressing it goes down now I want to press them and this number goes up one at a time but they're jumping because it's looping so quickly this controller that it's reading the button over and over and over again and I'm not giving enough time to release the button afterwards so even a very quick press jumps more much more than I want it to so I'm going to work on a way to trap the buttons so that it only process one click at a time now if we move this out of the way this is the code I've got so I've got the lookup table here we've got the two servos attached here the servos aren't running at the moment so if anything bad happens it's not going to throw the servos and damage a clock or anything else it's just generating numbers and feeding them to the debug port now these bits here are for the buttons so this one is the up button which increments the number and this one is the decrement it's trapping it here if it's being pressed then it's incrementing the number if it tries to go higher than 359 then it sets it as 359 so it's got a minimum and a maximum and it's sending those numbers here when it's printing them on the screen so next step is going to be trapping the button presses so it only processes one click at a time and I think I've got a plan for that now this is the plan I've got two blocks of code two conditional statements the first one is this so that's all of this little bit here and this now this one this fires when I press the button that's a whole bit there this one when I release the button I've got a flag variable it's here it's set to 1 when I press a button and it's set back to 0 when I release it because it's only set once on a button press and once on a release regardless of how many times this cycles down in the loop I can look for a change of state in that variable and work out whether I press a button once or not and then do some stuff regarding that so I check first of all what the state of the flag is if the flag is 0 that's fine I'll do something here then I set the flag to 1 and it locks as 1 so if I've got the button pressed and it carries on moving around the flag is still 1 and that's important because if you want to get around to here and the flag is 0 it will do some stuff but if it's not and it's not at the moment because it's 1 then it will jump over this so every time it loops it will only do this once for a button press when I release the button the flag goes back to 0 when it loops around it works out at zero and it's fine it will do stuff in if I press a button if not it will just jump over all of this so it fires this bit here doing stuff once when I press a button and that's it when I release the button it resets that flag so that should work we'll put that in both buttons and we'll test it haha <laughs> it works it's working Fantastic. Okay, so I'll press a button. It increments the number by one. Even if I hold the button down, it won't spit numbers out continuously. Which is brilliant. I release the button, press it again and again and again. 
down button works and this will change the other servo, servo B. So I've got servo A controlled by these buttons and servo B controlled by this potentiometer. So as I step around on one servo, I use the potentiometer to line up the other servo. Then I can, I can recall both numbers and that gets me by a lookup table. Fantabulous, right. Let's get writing these down. Oh, this is gonna be long. Right, I've been at this for a long while now. I'm halfway through. It's fiddly, but um, I'm getting there. Two hours later, we're done. My gods. Got a bit funny toward the end because the numbers started to trail off as it got to the peak of the waveform. So I just sort of spread them out manually because between this range and this range all the way over here, the numbers are pretty much the same. And I could I could sell it to like one three eight all the way down to the bottom, and it'd be pretty much okay. But the numbers are a bit all over the place in the middle as well, where it's all kind of faster. But I'll plot these into the um, graph on Open Office, put them on this spreadsheet and plot them out and see how they look. I might have to adjust some of them at some point, just like one number at a time. But here we go. Let's write all these in. It's after quite some time putting these values into my spreadsheet. I've plot the curve for servo B. It's a bit all over the place as you can see, but I've tested it and it does work alright. I mean it's weird that I've got this little bump here, because this should be fairly straight down, sort of curve around quite gracefully and up and there again, but you've got like, little bumps here and little bits here where the linkage wasn't quite aligned or there was some servo jitter, but there's enough play in the mechanism anyway to negate this being a problem. So let me show you the program running with this and this one for server A. Verily this video veers most verbose, but I shall press on even into double digit minutes of this video being long because we're really really close now to this servo bit of it being finished and actually having it properly moving and not jamming up and not making horrible noise. So anyway, is a first lookup table we generated from the sine wave on that website and there's a second one I manually plotted last night it uses the same index value for both of them so it steps through each one at the same time and on their button presses we are incrementing the steps of both servos at the same time and then looping around that so I'll show you how that runs okay that works great I press this button, it'll step through the index one step at a time. I've taken out the other button and the potential motor because I no longer need those. And it's making that mm, noise because it's only stepping very small amounts. So the next step will be to recode it with my original sweep program so that it does a sweep for both servos, for both lookup tables when I press the button once. Right, I've changed my code to strip out all the unnecessary crap. So I've got the first lookup table for the first servo, got this one for the second servo. I've just got one pin and one index number assigned. I've put in here the initial servo positions so that it doesn't jerk to like 90 degrees at power up and end up wrecking the clock. And I've just got the loop going around. Looking at the switch, and if it's higher, it will jump to here and it'll move the servos around in one continuous circle. And there's no debouncing or anything else, so if I hold the button down, it'll just go round and round and round. So let's run that and I'll show you that working. It works! It works and it's not jamming up or making any really, really bad noises. It still feels a bit grating because of this, pro this servo that was programmed manually and as you can tell there's a bit of a dwell when it gets to here 
and that's because of this flat area here where I've typed in the numbers manually as I mentioned before there might be a problem with this bump and this bump is causing the servo to slow down here and then just stop and this coincides with this flat region here at the peak of this properly made sine wave so what I'm going to try and do is smooth this out so it's a bit more, bit more of a smooth transition there won't be as much dwell time and it will smooth out the judders as well you can hear the effect if I unplug the second servo and then run it again versus if I only have the second server. So between this one and this one there's a marked difference. Again you can tell the dwell that occurs about here. And it sort of speeds up and slows down. It's going to speed up anyway because the the way the server moves through this region is different to how it moves through this region which is why I can't use a proper sine wave for both of them, only for one of them but I'll be programming them, making it a bit more smooth next week and I'll be trying to sort it out just get it to run a bit better but that part of it is done essentially well I think that's an excellent stopping point for our video Tune in next Tuesday when we go through and I'll show you what this is for. So if you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell icon so you know when I've uploaded. Until then, have a great week, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next Tuesday.